Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Photographic Memory Podcast. I'm excited to work with the program, Dr. Shannon Panza. Dr. Shannon, what's going on? How are you? Oh, hey, uh, how would you put it? Good morning, Australia and the rest of the world. <laughs> are you going to get a ship on the Barbie today, Dr. Shannon? Well, that's uh, it's kind of a colloquialism, but uh, I haven't uh, I haven't stoked up the Barbie in a while. I should. It would be uh, it would be good to do. Is Paul Hogan still the the most famous Australian? Probably. I, I think he's the most recognized, uh, probably anywhere in the world as as a leading Australian. Even though I don't even think he lives here anymore, but that's okay too. Uh, he still seems to get out there and uh, represent us. Maybe it's <laughs> maybe it's Nemo now. Maybe Nemo is the most famous. But let's go ahead and jump right into today's topic, and that's your mentor. You learned photographic memory uh, from Dr. Richard Welsh, and it's really interesting to look at how that introduction happened. We've talked about certain things. We talked about because of meeting him and how your life was saved when a factory almost exploded and you saved your life from that horrible explosion but let's go right into this particularly enough just talking about how you met dr richard welsh and look at specifically his background more go ahead okay well dr richard welsh um his uh his basic history was that he uh he dealt with finances for uh for people uh he was a professional baseball player uh, early on in his life he had a lot of successes. He, he had climbed a lot of mountains and he found that uh, he was still wanting. So what he did is he found the next big mountain, which is the mountain that you keep climbing and you keep growing with. And that is uh, you know, how to use your mind better, how to use everything else better. And this is what led him to the discovery of mental photography. Now, this all started back in 1975. Uh, he went out and he uh, uh, he bought a uh, speed reading company, and he found out in in six months' time that the uh, the whole speed reading industry was uh, uh, basically he asked certain questions of all the different uh, all the different so-called gurus at that time, including Evelyn Woods, as to uh, what happens to the words that are no longer so vocalized whenever you speed read. And this is actually what led to this discovery because no one could answer that one question. It's a logical question. If you're speed reading, you're missing or so-called missing more right. words than what, what you'd be reading. And so that didn't stand the logic. What happens with those words? Well, since we're, uh, since uh, since the graph actually shows that speed reading is faster and actually better in comprehension than reading, then, then what we find is that's a logical question to ask is, well, why? Why would, uh, why would it become more effective and more efficient by going at higher speeds than reading where you're not catching all the words? Why would that be important? Well, he was asking the, the one question that no one could answer. So he set out to find the answer. The answer is actually mental photography. As you go faster and faster, uh, at around 25,000 words per minute, you can, no longer, uh, you can no longer visually see the words so that you can actually sub-vocalize them. So you launch into something new called mental photography, uh, where the photographic memory fit into all this. And what ended up happening is he ended up uh, discovering mental photography, which uses photographic memory in order to do what we need to do. Uh, that's, that's, really, uh, that's really where he started with this. Now, uh, he was the type of person that he really wanted to help people and he really wanted to put things out there that were going to be helpful to people. Uh, he had... Um, uh, he had people working for him, uh, people, instructors and such. And he actually, for a very short amount of time, he put this in the, uh, uh, one of the Arizona state uh, school systems. Right. And he had such wonderful results there, such screamingly great results there that the school system put on the brakes, said, oh, wait, well, this is too scary. 
because you're turning our children into geniuses literally overnight. And we can't have that because you're, uh, you're basically undermining the way that the school system works, which is slow and laborious. So anyhow, uh, whenever it came time to renew his contract into the school system, well, uh, they, they bought a school bus instead, one that would ship the, school, the, uh, the sports teams around. And that was, that was more important than the children learning how to do something absolutely spectacular. So, okay, well, we then know what the school system's all about. It's uh, about controlling people down to a certain level. And as long as you can learn within those parameters, that's fine too. <laughs> and that's crazy to think about in schools, but I mean, when you talk about Dr. Richard Wells, how he discovered this, you talked about his abilities, professional uh, ability, and also his professional ability in sports. How did he come up with this? He thought this through with the speed reading, but mental photography, did he do research into it and other people that have been before Dr. Richard Welsh in learning this, teaching this? Yeah. Well, there was, there was one particular uh, teacher back in the 1950s that discovered this as well, but um, uh, and he wrote a book, uh, Damn the School Systems, Full Steam Ahead, which again portrays what, what we faced as well as we, as we went through this. Um, but outside of that person, no one really explored this way because everybody was interested in kowtowing to the school system. And uh, basically Richard Welch funded his own, uh, his own research. And he was he was led uh, he was led to do it that way so that this would be developed as a separate um, uh, a separate brain discipline uh, where it wasn't reliant upon other disciplines. So that's that's what he did. Now that research, uh, one of the pieces of research was that uh, they were using a statistoscope to flash information at incredible speeds. Over a million, wow. uh, over a million words per minute, and they found that uh, everyone, given enough time with this machine, could actually learn to recognize those symbols at the uh, symbols and such, and words and and paragraphs at a very high level of speed. And this is subliminal speeds, if you will. Right. So what ended up happening is he discovered. The, the technical way to do it. And he was, also, he was also taking a look at how the brain reacted to this level of information. And this actually super excites all levels of consciousness at the same time. So it really does some great things in the brain. It, it really pipes up what you're doing. So the, uh, the tetisoscope was one thing and the, the brain analysis on mental photography was another. And these were conducted by research universities, uh, you know, on his behalf because he was paying for the studies to be done. And uh, eventually, that's why that's why he was able to uh, that's why he was able to keep the uh, all the data secret is because he funded it himself, okay. and everybody was sworn on to to secrecy agreements, NDAs, what have you. So, <clears throat> anyhow. Uh, so he took this information and he started building the, uh, the mental photography, the brain management. And over time, he was able to, uh, over time, he was able to establish a good routine on how to do this. One of the first things that we used with the mental photography was the Einstein's distraction index, which we still have today as lesson number one, because it is so valuable to be able to concentrate. And uh, just turning pages, uh, turning pages, taking tests. Some of the uh, some of the original people were getting, uh, you know, six hundred six thousand words per minute uh, with ninety to ninety five percent recall, and they made it they made it look very very easy, and it is. And this is actually this is actually the normalcy of the human state. This is the way that we are actually supposed to be normally. 
but we're led to believe through a series of uh, through a series of beliefs, we're led to believe that this is not the way that this that whenever you read, which is actually a taught, uh, it's a taught brain structure. Whenever you learn to read, you have to read every word verbatim to get the information. Well, this isn't true. And it can be proven statistically otherwise. Whereas mental photography, mental photography allows you to get 100% of the information and it's stored for life. Okay. And because our brain is set up on a dynamic system that changes with us over time, that memory of all that, of all that information is retained. And this is what allows us to actually keep that information for our entire life. Uh, now, when it came to Richard Welch, he made continuous discoveries all along. And he used, there was 10 years. Imagine this, 10 years of simplification down to a strict formula, how to get results. And that strict formula is what is in ZoxPro.com. How did you in, meet in, Dr. Richard Welch? How did that happen? Excuse me? How'd you meet him? Oh, how do I meet him? Well, I, I, I wanted to learn how to control my subconscious. So I went to a seminar and he started teaching me how to control my subconscious through the seminar. And then I explored, I asked him a lot of questions. I'm, I'm, I'm very analytical. So I was probably his worst student because <laughs> I asked him a lot of questions oh, goodness, in order to, in order to get this dealt with in my own mind. And, uh, and the results were obviously the results were spectacular. And ultimately I wound up, uh, I, I wound up going to work for him and I was in, in his office, uh, working in his office for 17 years. And it's been quite a journey ever since. So I got, I got on that journey. Uh, I got blown up to be in that journey, but I, I got into that journey and it's been very interesting <laughs> to say the exactly. least. I've, I've right. met in, I've met a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of interesting people along the way. Exactly. And the way to learn this amazing tool that Dr. Richard Welsh created and now you're teaching is to go to zuxpro.com. Absolutely. Go to zuxpro.com because great things happen here, right? Absolutely. Zuxpro.com. So. Absolutely. So that was the photographic memory podcast. Take care, everybody, and we'll talk next very soon. Take care, guys.